Hi, I'm Stewie 3D, uh, and in the purpose of today's video, I'm just going to go through a little gremlin that I had with my brand new 2017 HP Omen laptop. Now, overall, this laptop has been absolutely fantastic, really uh, far surpassed my expectations for what is a cheap gaming laptop. However, there has been one little issue that I've had with it. Um, and it took me a little while to actually realise that it was an issue because I spent most of my time with it plugged into the AC adapter. You know, so, um, so as you would because you're going to be playing games on it and you're going to want to be on the AC adapter. I very, I very rarely unplugged it. However, <coughs> every now and again, I would get a blue screen of death driver underscore power underscore state underscore failure uh, it seems to be quite a common issue but nobody seems to know how to fix it however i do believe i might have sorted it on mine uh, i've had i've um gone through the steps i'm now about to go through with you and um so far touch wood i have not had any problems now as i said it took me a little while to realize what was causing it because it would just throw up at the time seemingly randomly however after a couple of days I did notice a pattern and the pattern was the laptop would be on AC adapter and if I was using it and then decided to unplug the AC adapter whilst using it a few minutes later driver power state failure reboot uh, likewise if I was on battery and decided to plug it in a few minutes later yeah, sometimes it was a few minutes, sometimes it was longer. Driver power state failure reboot. So I went into, uh, I did what other users recommended, and I went in and cranked the thing onto high performance mode, which for the most part, part actually did stop the blue screen of death. However, there was another weird little issue. Uh, basically, if I unplug the AC adapter, and then moved my mouse down to anywhere near the battery icon within within the first couple of minutes of actually unplugging it, the the whole computer would just freeze, and I would have to hold the power button to do a force reboot. And so clearly something was up with one of the power related drivers. You know, I had a look around, I uninstalled various things, reinstalled various things, and I still couldn't stop fix the issue. So what I did was a bit of a nuclear option but turns out it's probably going to be your best bet um now i did try to say on the previous one of my previous videos that to be honest with you this laptop didn't actually come with a whole load of bloatware the only thing that could really be considered bloat was the mcafee live safe or live safe which i uninstalled pretty much straight away and rolled back to windows defender the rest of it was just hp branded apps and utilities which yeah were needed for day-to-day -day running the laptop However, it is one of those I suspect what was causing my blue screen of death. So what I did is I did a vin I reinstalled Windows. Now I didn't use the HP recovery partition. I because obviously if you do that, it, it's going to just reinstall everything you had before as if it had come out of factory. So what I did is I downloaded the Windows Media Creation tool. And used it to create a vanilla version of Windows. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. Now, most people who have bought gaming laptops, I assume, would know how to reinstall Windows. However, you know, there are going to be the few who probably don't and are probably going to end up having blue screen of deaths and going to be calling HP and going to be sent round in circles. However, so yeah. I didn't use the recovery partition and the reason I didn't is because Windows now is actually pretty decent because uh, unlike Windows of old where you had this little sticker and you had to type in a 20 digit serial key and then uh, because you'd already activated it before you then had to call Microsoft to get them to un unlock it and use it. Windows 10 now has all the serial key baked into the hardware, so you can download the ISO direct from Microsoft rather than using the Hewlett Packard one and still activate it as normal with no issues at all and what you're getting then is a completely vanilla version of windows uh without any of the hp stuff and um yeah it just worked a lot better so um and microsoft have made it a lot easier to do now 
The only additional piece of hardware you're going to need is a USB flash drive. I used an 8 gig one which you can pick up for about £2.50 or something like that depending on where you shop. So first of all you download the tool. Now in true Blue Peter fashion here's one I did earlier. So um, you double click that and it will fire up this. It will give you a Windows uh, Defender wa uh, warning. Do you want to allow it? Yes, you do. So you then go accept, create install, and then you don't go upgrade this PC. You go create installation media for another PC. Now, if you see there, there's a use recommended options for this PC. This is just the best way of doing it. As you see, it's downloaded the United Kingdom version because I am in the United Kingdom, as you can probably tell by my accent. Windows 10, 64-bit. Do that, job's done. However, before you do that, if you've only just got your uh, HP open, I would recommend opening the HP support app just to make sure your warranty is registered. Um, because I don't, because I already did that. That's what I would recommend, because um, when you open uh, the little support app, it registers your warranty when you first set it up. So, yeah, open the HP support app and, yeah, register your warranty. Now, whilst your Windows 10 is downloading, because this will take, uh, you know, a little while, depending on how fast your internet connection is, go to HP's website and download the support assistant. Now... You're going to be questioning me as to why I did that. Well, the support assistant is actually a very useful piece of kit. What it does is it just aggregates and downloads the drivers for you. Um, and in this case, for me, when I did a fresh install of Windows, it didn't actually download any of the bloatware apps. It just downloaded what it needed. So it only downloaded for me an Intel Wi-Fi driver although Wi-Fi was working straight out of the box anyway. Um, it downloaded a Wi-Fi driver, Realtek LAN driver, Realtek audio, uh, the Bang & Olufsen bit, um, because I believe that comes as part of Realtek anyway. Um, and it downloaded a couple of other drivers. It wasn't, there was no extra utilities downloaded, it was just the drivers. However, oddly enough, it didn't download the NVIDIA driver. So you're going to want to go and download the GeForce experience. The good thing about this laptop is, is well, you, you're questioning why we're downloading it, you know, do we put it on another USB? Well, the good thing is this laptop has two drives. Dump the HP support assistant and the NVIDIA uh, GeForce U uh, experience install files onto your um, one terabyte drive, because when you do a reinstall of Windows, you're not going to lose any data off it because you're only going to be looking at the uh, 128 gig SSD. Right, obviously the, now your Windows Media creation has all done and dusted. Uh, your USB stick is ready to go. So to boot it, because the BIOS on this thing is ridiculously quick and you could, it's very difficult to get into, the easiest way would be to go Start, Settings, Update and security, recovery, and then hit advanced startup and hit restart now. Now, this bit I can't show you because I don't. I lack the relevant hardware to actually uh, live capture a Windows install. However, on that menu, you will see a um, use. Uh, Something along the lines of um, use uh, other installs uh, media, uh, other other boot media such as USB drives. Click that, and then click UEFI uh, USB install, um, and then what that will do is reboot the laptop, and it will load up from the USB stick, and then it will give you the options on um, either upgrade Windows 10 or advanced. What you want to do is go to advanced. Find the 128 gig SSD partition, and there's a lot of partitions that fit. There's about six, I believe, but it's the one which is around about 118 gig. Click on that, hit format, and then hit next. Windows will completely reinstall, and everything is done. If you then fire up the HP support assistant, uh, that will 
recognize your laptop, it'll scan, recognize, and select the drivers that it needs to download. However, there is one driver it does struggle with. Because in the background, Microsoft, in their helpful way, downloads the Intel HD driver for you, it downloads it quicker than the Hewlett Packard one uh, downloads it. And unfortunately, you can't install the Hewlett Packard one if you've already got one installed. So, what you need to do uh, to get the Hewlett Packard one installed, and this is purely up to you, but I like the fact that Hewlett Packard can maintain the drivers all in one place. But um, so, to, if you want to run the Hewlett Packard one, you go to Start, Settings, System. Apps and features, and then when it loads, I've got quite a bit on it here. You uninstall the Intel processor graphics, and then um, you might have to uh, you'll have to uninstall it, reboot it, and then the HP support assistant will reinstall it. But as long as the HP support assistant can install it, then it will continue to update it in the future. And well, so far, since I've done that, I've not had any of the power related issues at all you know I can unplug go on to battery no problems at all uh, I can go near the battery icon as you can see fully charged 100% um, there is one bit of kit uh, that HP supply which doesn't download a standard with the support assistant and it is the 3d drive guard um, and to be honest with you it's just under this list this is the HP Omen driver list and then yeah HP 3D drive guard and what that is is a little app it just sits there in your system tray and what it does is it just protects your hard drive uh, using the inbuilt accelerometer so if I now start picking this laptop up and throwing it about it parks the hard drive heads on the physical hard drive and it just stops it damaging it so even though HP don't install it by default I highly recommend doing uh, downloading that and getting it installed and that is really uh, the, the whole purpose of this video just to say if you have been having the issues um, then yeah do it and to be honest with you I mean thankfully I was only two weeks in before I noticed this issue uh, and therefore I didn't lose any data when I did it because of the second drive as well um, at the end of the day, I would say, even if you just bought the HP Omen, just, I would just do a clean vanilla install of Windows straight off the bat. It's not going to hurt. <clears throat> at the end of the day, I've put this, we're including downloading and installing Windows and then installing all the drivers. I've put this laptop back to how I had it before I formatted it in the space of a couple of hours. So it's... Um, yeah, it's, it's really fairly easy to do um, and it's highly recommended. Um, that said, would it change my opinion on this laptop? And the answer is no. It's a, it's a pain in the arse. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Um, you know, it's not something you should have to do on a brand spanking new laptop. But, you know, unlike Apple, which is where I've come from, you know, the hardware and the software aren't made for each other specifically. You know, Apple Taylor made the hardware and the software together, so that's why everything has the, oh, it just works, the title which gets associated with Apple products. However, you know, it, as I said, with Windows, because it's obviously designed to run on anything and everything, and then the manufacturers add their own sort of spin on it, chances are it's something that HP installed in the factory. I have a feeling it might actually be the Energy Star app because that hasn't been reinstalled and that's the only thing that is related to power and battery that I can imagine would be what would cause it. So yeah, as I said, would it change my opinion on this laptop? No. It's a brilliant performing laptop and at the end of the day, all it's cost me to put it right is a couple of hours of my time. Um, as I said, if you do, um, this video is more to for people who have just bought the thing or are considering buying it. Uh, it's just something to be aware of. Or those who have already got a HP Omen and are suddenly having blue screens of death and they're starting to freak out. Oh, I'm going to have to call HP, I'm going to have to send it back. You know, not all is lost. And as I said, compared to the competition, um, 
this is only a software glitch, something that can be fixed in a couple of hours with a USB stick. Um, as I said, Dell's uh, problems with the Inspiron, namely the screen, you know, that's a whole, you're going to have to pull the hardware apart, put a new screen in. It's easy to do, but, you know, you're still having to unscrew things and put things in. This is just a USB stick and, yeah, job is done. Um, well, I hope this video has been helpful and um, I hope, you know, even though it is a bit of a minor gremlin, you know, it doesn't put you off buying what would otherwise be a very good laptop. Um, well, that's it for this video. I hope it helps. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.